Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So today I've got a special surprise guest who just kind of dropped by, was uh, in the neighborhood, and I thought I would put together a little video and maybe uh, ask our guy Brad Deal here some questions about uh, his rise in this type of uh, work and kind of where he got where he is today and uh, hopefully cover a lot of questions that y'all might have for Brad while I have him here in front of the camera. So. I guess we're just going to start with, uh, you know, good to have you here. Howdy, James. It's a huge honor for me, buddy. <laughs> I have admired your work for years, and uh, yeah, it's, it's like, I really appreciate uh, this opportunity to come by and say hello if it's in the uh, area. Absolutely. And, we, we've we been trying to get together uh, over the past, what, year or so? Yeah, we're Trying to figure least, out a time when yeah. uh, one of us could visit the other one when we're doing our thing and that type of thing, and hopefully we'll be able to do that in the future as well, but... Let's just start with, like, how did you get started in photography? I think that's kind of an origin story that's fun to hear sure. uh, anyone in our line of work. Well, it certainly wasn't sports photography. It wasn't even uh, photography with a camera at all. Um, kind of grew up fascinated with remote control, RC cars, uh, planes, and all this stuff, and then drones came out. Yeah. And... Uh, so I was fascinated with that. Well, that and worked out because drones have cameras on them and they're that, like RC exactly. uh, remote control. Yeah, now. so that's kind of how I got started. Uh, became one of the first licensed drone pilots in the state of Virginia. And uh, I started doing landscape photos with drones. And nobody in our area, in southwest Virginia, had really seen our area from that vantage point. Yeah. And Unless those, you're in a plane or something. Yeah, exactly. So... I started with that, and then I would take uh, those images every year, and I would sell calendars at Christmas time. Oh, wow. And those did really well, and made enough money from that to actually purchase a camera. And still never wanted to photograph people. Because, right. You know, if I screw up an image of a landscape, it's not going to yell back at me. Well, I had the same, very similar origin where I'd, I was thought I was going to do landscapes and still lifes, and... Not have to worry about you know the pictures you know not coming out right. and someone being disappointed and so you know I I actually moved from doing those types of things to using myself as a subject to practice my lighting and all because then I just could only get angry with myself. <laughs> the pictures look go. terrible. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's kind of how I started. Like I said, and I was still doing some landscapes and uh, ended up going to a game and photographing my cousin's daughter playing uh, a softball game, and I was mostly just experience for me and uh, you know cut her out put her on the backgrounds and stuff and the next thing you know another kid has to have it another kid and then the boys team and that kind of thing goes and uh, a lady reached out to me wanting to do just like a one-on-one -on -one session with her son yeah and it was uh, track and football and I didn't want to do anything traditional I want to do something different and out of the box and those images went over really really well and it just was almost like a pyramid effect um it's kind of how things got started. You know, it was one person, then another, and then another. And next thing you know, you're in the sports photography world, and you had no intentions of it. Right, right. Well, and well, and you brought it up, too, So, I, and I wanted to hit on this, was uh, the out-of-the-box type stuff yeah. and kind of where you get your ideas. And Because I think that's something that sets you apart from a lot of photographers is not doing just the static portraits where you're doing some right. crazy creative type things and um, that you don't normally see you know, out there, and that's kind of, I think, what at least you know, caught my eye yeah, when I'm scrolling through exactly, uh, you know, Instagram yeah. and stuff like that. Because, uh, you know, my whole thing was I did not want to just give the kids stand here and smoke, pile, <laughs> smile and pose. <laughs> pose in the smoke. Yeah, there you go. Or it's probably pre-smoke because that's kind of been a part it of it too. Yeah, and uh, so I wanted to do something different. And uh, like it didn't matter if it was just changing your angle, you know, to get low, get from that hero shot. Um, and then you started getting different ideas. You know, well, what if I just put a bunch of tennis balls in a blanket and we just threw them? You know, see what, what, what would happen. Right. Um, and then, you know, had a kid. I said, if I can get this kid, get this angle right, where I can get low, and have him jump up and get a great pose in the middle of a field goal post. And the kid nailed it, you know. Um, so that was... So are you finding, like, coaching and doing this kind of stuff? Because I know... I guess in my world, it would be like a time factor, but I'm guessing that, um, you know, sometimes you'll have these kids, maybe you get some shots in the can, and then you kind of move to where you, it's kind of like, let's have yeah, fun with exactly. some stuff. Yeah, you yeah. want to get, the, you, you've got, you got to get some, what I call mom and dad type images. Um, you right. Know, the, the smile type. And I always try to do, in these sessions, I try to do um, 
obviously the smile images. I want to do some sort of passion type shot, like because most of these kids are seniors, right? And I want them, you know, it's sitting head down, eyes closed, just some sort of passion type. And then I want some sort of um, emotional thing. And then I right. want to do something fun. You know, those those are the the main things that I want to focus on on every single shoot. Is we just we want these kids to have fun and enjoy it, and uh, and have been luckily so far that. At this point, you know, they kind of come to expect that, and they will do about anything I say. Well, yeah, well, and I would say, I guess now, too, they're probably, uh, you know, we, we enter into these photo shoots, it's kind of probably like, let's run through, let's get through these uh, just sta- normal yeah. type shots, and let's get to the Brad Deal yeah. type stuff. Right, yeah, because, um, you know, and, and also, you know, you, there's also a rapport you got to build with these right. athletes, because they're not accustomed to being in front of a camera, and... Uh, so you start with those types of images, and you kind of build right. confidence in that person. You can show them on the back, or you show them on the uh, tablet, and they see that oh, that's cool, this, that, and then you slowly build that rapport, and you build that confidence in the athlete. You get that collaboration, absolutely. Kind of and yeah. then let's, all right, now let's go have some fun. Yeah, and that's just speaking like when I've done some of these teams and stuff like that, and then the first time is usually where I have to build that trust. And then sometimes the next time I go back, I'll see some of the same players and they will have seen the work or kind of know the process of it. So then it's a little bit easier, yeah. but then you, you kind of start, um, I guess where most of these, uh, most of your clients have probably seen some of your work out there and it's, uh, you know, they're excited probably. So they're, they're easily moldable. I'm sure to kind of do some of the things that you want to do, which I think is, yeah, you know, that's, yeah. that's it's, awesome. It's, it's kind it's of part just, of it. And the, the hard part now is, is just still trying to be, uh, original and creative, right? Um, because you feel like it's either been done or somebody else has done it or whatever. And you, I, could, I try to be original uh, as I can. Obviously, there's certain images that uh, a player says, oh, "I've seen this. I want to do that." So you know, you can obviously do that for them, right? But uh, yeah, it's, it's getting more and more difficult. I'll say that for sure. Well, let's let's talk about too, because so you know, for people to know kind of what you're doing and and where these crazy results come come from you're showing these you know really excellent behind the scenes type you know videos and it's something that i've recently started to kind of build this channel around and uh it's something that i wouldn't have ever thought about you know normally it's just kind of get there let's get the photos yeah. done and then let's get out but you know i think the attention that you pay toward behind the scenes showing how it's done and then showing the resulting images uh you know Talk to like, yeah. how that has kind well, of changed your, your world and, and how you go about doing that. Absolutely. So when I started, it was just posting images on Instagram like everyone was doing. Yeah. And uh, you would start seeing more and more of these reels and stuff pop up. And so I thought I would try one. And <laughs> in this sports industry world, there wasn't that many at that time right. that, that was doing that. And the very first one I did was just a kid doing a head first slide into a base. And I took the picture, showed the image, and then showed the final result. And, you know, when it was the very first one i ever done, and, like, I'm used to getting 20, 30 likes, and that thing's just 5,000 views and hundreds of likes. Right. It's like, well, maybe this is the key. You know, maybe this is the uh, secret. And uh, so I kept doing more and more of that, and then finally something hit and caught on. And now, was it the ESPN? The ESPN, really? yeah. Like, well, actually, I think that it was ESPN, but um, the reason ESPN found it is because my very first post on TikTok – Okay. was of that and it hit like 7 million views <laughs> and then ESPN picked it up and the next thing you know you look at your account and you're, you're at 10,000 you're at 50,000 100,000 and you know well that's that's where we initially I think where I, I found you were because then I had a bunch of people that knew me they saw your pictures and stuff and then they sent it sent it to me it's like have you seen this guy doing these photos <laughs> and I was you know I was like no I really hadn't and then you know after the you know first handful of people sent that yeah. you know by the twentieth person that sent right. it to me I was like yeah I've seen I've seen that well you know um, and then I would watch some and then more I followed stuff. you though I did you yeah know, I, I, I instantly well, and it was, uh, it's really you know well done work well so. I appreciate that but like you are a huge inspiration like and uh, like I talked about with my uh, drone photography and having that Instagram page and. It was, you know, 3,000 people, and I started posting the sports stuff on that. Yeah. And it was just kind of landscapes, and it was sports, and it was landscapes, and then sports again. And one of your videos, you talked about how on your feed that you need to represent what niche you're in. Right. So right. the landscapes need to be landscapes, sports need to be sports. So from that video... 
became Brand Deal Sports. Well, that's, so thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. But that, that is, and that's um, we were talking about this earlier off camera. And I, I, I think most photographers want to just show all their pretty pictures in a portfolio. And that's what I was doing. I was going to these portfolio reviews for advertising photography. And I would sit down and, and have that portfolio of all these different types of photography. Right. And I probably had two, maybe I had five reviews in a day. And, and half of those, or five or six, it's um, easier to make the, make the math work. Right. Probably three of the six uh, told me that I came across as an amateur because I had... You know, they couldn't tell exactly what I was yeah. uh, specializing, right. focusing in. And so then I took that knowledge and revamped everything. And then I had a marketing, there's a marketing video somewhere on the channel. And that you, I'm guessing that you might yeah, have exactly. uh, come across. And uh, and that's, yeah, you have to, you know, you can do different uh, scopes of work, but then you need to kind of separate those. Um, and then if you're having success with one, you know, like you're doing, you know, stick with that. Yeah, yeah, you're 100% right. Um, whatever you're doing you can focus on one thing and perfect that one thing, then you can grow from that. Um, so yeah, like I said, I was I was all over the board. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's where you you, you kind of be a, a jack of all trades and master of exactly. of, of nothing, and that's kind of what uh, some of these agencies are looking for uh, in photographers. If you're looking to go to the commercial advertising type route and get some of these larger budget type shoots, they want to see a well defined styled body of work. Yeah. And then know that they can count on you to pull it off, which I think the behind the scenes kind yeah, of plays in. Absolutely. Because my thing is is I don't want to use Photoshop. I want to be able to create um, as cool an image as I possibly can in camera right. and then show that directly right there by um, when we do the video and I take the image and we show it right there that it pops up on the tablet. Like I want them to see that that uh, this isn't Photoshop. What you see well, is what you get. And they also, I mean, and, and so there, to me, there are a lot of bonuses to that because then you're showing exactly, uh, you know, what your subject is getting and then they get, get excited about it and they're there when that is actually, you know, created. Right. And it's not something that, you know, I'll, you'll see the image in a month when I have time to Photoshop yeah, whatever I'm going to exactly. do. And in the commercial world, I feel like we've cycled through just I've been here doing this so long. I've I've done like uh, you know book covers where it, it took like a month of retouching oh, Photoshop gosh. and all kinds of stuff and compositing and that type of thing. To where I think it circled back around to still like what you're talking about, where if you can capture most of it in camera. Yeah. Um, people might. I've got two dogs wandering around here. If you hear the jingle, and that's <laughs> what, what's going on. But but so that's uh, and I feel like it's circled back around. But then. In this world that we live in, where it's just everyone's everything instantly, people can see exactly yeah. what they're getting yeah. right out of camera. You become a hero. And oh. Everyone, when everyone leaves, uh, they know exactly yeah. you know what yeah. they're, they're going to expect. You know, in their I guess their inbox. But tell me, so you know, with the behind the scenes, what have you found like is the best way to you know capture behind the scenes? I've been experimenting with all kinds of different well, tools. For me, like if you watch any of my videos, they're all I try to keep them all basically the same. Um, I don't have a videographer or anything. I'm a one-man band, and I just who's ever there. I don't care if it's a, a, a brother, a sister, a mom, a dad, a janitor. I've had a grandfather. It doesn't matter. I say hold the camera here. Makes me get my logo in the back. So I always turn my hat backwards for branding. Yeah. So I always do that, and I say I'm gonna take the image, and then whenever I take the image, you go to this tablet, and I'll swipe and show the result. And it's that simple. And then I just try to repeat that. Um, Every single time, so you kind of know what to expect, and so it's just, basically your phone. So you, just you're using it. just a, just my phone. using your phone, and then you got it, I guess, right there, and you can instantly either combine it with something else if you need to, or just put it straight out on. Uh, well, what I what I do or in the gallery, I guess. Yeah, what I do is just with the because uh, I use CapCut to make all my reels. It's the best video creative app on an iPhone, in my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, the way I do it is just I keep all those clips. We record everything. Then I'll find five or six of my favorites. Right. And then, you know, those photos as well. And then I always got to find the music, which is the hardest part of all of it, is finding music for me. And and then just try to edit to the beat. Right. No, and that, I mean, it's, it's working. That's yeah. What, now, do you find, like, most of your clients are finding you on social media, and that's kind of yeah, where people yeah. are reaching out in your DMs or... You get a lot of a lot of people... Stalking do. you, showing up at your house. And <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, I always reach out, if it's, if it's Instagram or it's Facebook Messenger or email, you know, um, you know, the website. Right. You know, a lot of those, it takes all of them. You know, you don't want to just kind of limit yourself to, to one particular thing. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, you want to reach all demographics because personally, I think that with, let's say, Facebook, for instance, you're hitting most of the parents. With Instagram, oh, yeah. you're hitting a lot of the teens and stuff. And then with TikTok, you're also hitting um, a lot of those younger generation yeah. kids. So, um, you know, you got to hit all the demographics. Well, it must be nice when, when they're all out there asking for the Brad Deal look and you no. actually show up and here's Brad <laughs> Deal to give us the, the actual Brad Deal look. No. <laughs> well, let's talk about, let's jump to uh, gear because everyone loves to uh, talk about gear. Sure. So, I mean, like, I, what cameras have you found that work um, well for you? I guess lights and yeah. anything else. Sure. So, my favorite camera um, is the Sony A7R5, and it's because of that flip screen and because I am always on the ground. If you've seen any reel I've ever done, I'm on the ground because I want these kids to get that hero look, right, you know, right. make them big and imposing. And with that flip screen, I can put that camera right on the ground and I can see exactly what I need to see. Um, so to me, that's extremely important. And I, and I just talked about that flip screen in yeah. one of my recent videos with the A9. Just It's got the same, the new A9 III has got the same flip screen that you're talking about, yeah. the A7R5. So that is by far my favorite camera. It's the reason I chose it over the A1 is because of the screen. Right. It's it simply the only reason. Um, and then as far as lights, you know, I am a Westcott Top Pro, and I do use Westcott FJ400s. Um, I know people talk about they're not powerful enough for this or that. They're extremely powerful. I shoot middle of the day, all day, and I never have an issue with, with power. They're consistent as far as the lighting and stuff right. is concerned, with the, the output. And uh, they're just so simple and easy to use. You know, it's nine stops of light. It's, it's so easy. <laughs> That's it. Only nine? Only nine. <laughs> Well, my favorite is just the actual remote coming from uh, using Pro Photo for years, which they've now updated their remotes. I, I need to say that, but uh, having to, being able to change the power on the uh, the transmitter, yeah, and know what the power was, that was the issue before. Is I'd have to walk around oh, okay. to remember what the power was. Right. But anyway, but speaking of lights, um, y'all, you and Jason are doing the lighted we up. We are tour doing the lighted up tour. We'd love to see you. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like our, I think our next one's in San Diego, um, and it's in. In April, I don't know when you're watching this video, but um, yeah, we've got San Diego, we've got Chicago, we've got Ohio, we've got Virginia, um, we've got Arkansas still yet to come this year, and we just uh, recently finished one in Bradenton, Florida. So um, yeah, it's it's a hands-on workshop. In my opinion, one of the best ways to learn is hands-on because uh, you not only are you there with other photographers building that network, right? But you're able to see distances from uh, the flashes where they are. Uh, you're able to see light power camera settings, and you're not just getting my style; you're getting Jason style. Right. You know, we always Jason is Rocktown. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. He's my good buddy. Sorry about that, Jason. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, it's it's a it's a great experience. We always fin finish with Q and A. Ask anything you want, um, and we stay right there until everyone has any questions left. And, yeah. And we break. Well, that's in, in one of my more recent videos too, talking about going to these uh, photo shows and and the benefits of that. And then, but then, I guess, taking it to the next level, what I think in this day and age, without going to school where you're going to be spending a bunch of money, I think these workshops are hands down the best way to yeah. learn the craft because you know, you're, you're right there with the, the instructors, you know, say like you. And if you have any questions, you're, you're, not, gonna, yeah. you're not ducking and, and no. diving away from any questions. Absolutely and, not. And then you have the on camera. So if stuff is not working out. Uh, you can instantly get feedback, and you can see, like you said, where the lights are. I get a lot of those questions. You know, how far are the lights from so and so, yep. and what's the power, and, and, and what's the power, and and all those related. So um, once you get things kind of set, and then see, you know, and that's see how it works. But and that's the magic of it all is when you know in your head what a certain power on a certain light at a certain distance is going to look like yeah. at a certain f stop. You know, all that kind of stuff, and then you can kind of start moving things around. And you already kind of know what it's going to do, and that's where kind of the magic is. And, and what I'm sure, like, when you're busting it, doing these multiple setups you know, during your shoots, yeah. you know, you've been doing this long enough to where you kind of know when you set things what it's going to kind of look like. Yeah, you, you got an idea now because I've, I've tried to create just like a, a very simple system, very simple setup that's easily recreatable and easy to move. And because I do move a lot from uh, location to location during one shoot, I don't you know, stay in one spot. Um, so we do a lot of different things. Yeah, no, that's, I, I do. I think that, that is um, probably a good way to wrap this too. Just, uh, you know, if y'all are, y'all reach out to uh, to Brad and Jason or 
you know, it, I'm pretty sure anyone watching this video is probably following these guys on Instagram and they, they have all the info, info on there where you can find them and find your way to their workshop. So anything else you want hey, to throw out just there? James. Really appreciate it, bud. Well, this is fun. We've, oh, we've been, my I'm, I'm glad you stopped by. Huge fan of yours. And, huge fan. This, uh, this, the best in the game. Well, I don't, I don't, the best in the game. Trust me. I don't know me. about that. We need to get off camera before I uh, <laughs> start telling all these lies. But uh, if y'all feel like this video was worthy, you know, give me that thumbs up down there. If you want to see more content, hit that little subscribe button down there. And uh, the little bell so YouTube will let you know when I you pop on here. And with surprise, yeah, with surprise guests. <laughs> My dogs are ready to um, attack somebody, but uh, in the meantime, y'all stay safe and healthy out there, and I'm going to let Brad do the honors of... See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>